We're freebasing it, dude. I'm we're doing drugs. I'm freebasing the weed now. What's up, stoners? Cupins here, and on today's video, I'm gonna tell you the story of the first time that I ever dabbed. Now, before we get into this, I want to mention YouTube's been a little bit weird lately. So I want you guys to follow me on my Twitch. If you don't use Twitch, go make an account right now. I do live streams almost every night and we chill in session. We got plenty of dabs and flour going. Who's a good girl? Also, if at any point you feel you really like this story, hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more story time videos. I'm going to see if I can keep them coming. Well, this is a story of the first time that I ever dabbed, and it actually took place several years ago. This was before Colorado legalized in 2014, because right after Colorado legalized for recreational sales, I moved there. So this happened shortly before that. I want to say it was in like 2012 or 13. It was a little bit before I moved to Colorado. I still lived in Florida at the time, so I didn't have access to dispensaries. Uh, I basically picked everything up off of... A few different plugs I shopped from. It was more like who was available or who had whatever I was looking for. Sometimes you'd hit somebody up and it's I could get you in a few days or something like this. So I really just shopped around with a few different plugs that I had. Well, there was this one guy I used to go to pretty often. Uh, it was a Brazilian dude. He was a really cool dude. <laughs> it's kind of like a character in my head. I, rem I remember uh, just going over there and it was just, it was always like a very chill vibe. He always had like a, uh, like a mountain of flour on his coffee table. He used to grind it up with a coffee grinder and dump it out. And you could just go over and just roll joints. He had papers everywhere. He's a very chill dude. I used to pick up from him all the time. And he always had some, like the better stuff that I would get out of the few plugs that I would shop with. His stuff was typically the best quality. So this dude, I picked up from him a lot, you know. I would go over there, hang out for like an hour or so sometimes, and we would just straight chill, smoke, watch TV, play video games, and it was just always a good time. Well, one day I'm there, and uh, this dude was asking me about like computers. He's like, hey man, you know, you know anything about computers? You know how to fix them? And I'm pretty savvy with some stuff. I was, I was pretty capable of doing certain things on computers. He told me some issues with it, and I was like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll take a look at it. So like I picked up some flour from this dude. I take his computer to my house. It was like a whole desktop, the, just like the whole setup. And uh, I worked on it for like a little while. I, basically it was just like an old Dell and there was no way it was gonna like operate really well again. He just had kind of an older computer and was seeing if I could tune it up. But it, it was just like an old PC, it didn't work out. But I brought it back to him the next time I was picking up and he wanted to like pay me for working on it or whatever and he wanted to he gave me some cash for it, but he wanted to like hook me up, you know. He asked me if I wanted to do dabs and like I'd never heard the term before. The only only thing I really smoked was flour at the time. I had a bong and a dry pipe and I had had homemade edibles a few times. I hadn't really messed with concentrates. They weren't even popular around then. This was like several years ago before dabbing was mainstream like it is now. So I remember like, uh well, you know, what is that? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. And he, he was basically just describing it like super weed. He's like, you take a hit of this and it's just like, you smoke like 10 bowls. And he was just describing it in a way where I was like, I definitely want to do that, you know? I was getting to the point where I was taking huge bong rips, smoking a lot. And you're like, yeah, how do I get, how do I get that next level high? How do I reach new heights here? And uh, dabs, dabs were the way. Well, at the time, my buddy got most of his stuff from Cali. This was at a time before people were like super into faking the products. Are you trying to dip? She might want to run around. No. 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 <laughs> She's off. So this was at a time several years ago um, before people were really big into faking products. I knew it was legit at the time just because of the packaging. But now you can buy any type of packaging, any branding online on Amazon, on eBay, on DHgate. You see everybody in every state has cookies and raw gardens and dank vapes and all these brands and they're just buying the packaging online. Well, this was a few years before that wave, so I, I didn't really have anything to worry about. I didn't, the only thing that I had to worry about at the time was the quality of the concentrate was so low. If you got dabs like more than five years ago and and you dabbed them like props to you because you dabbed some pretty bad stuff probably. I, I think about the first like few pounds of stuff I've probably dabbed. I wouldn't even touch it today. There's so many dabs that I've gone through, so many grams of concentrate, so many different types of things that I just wouldn't even look at today. I wouldn't even, 
you know. So we're getting set up to dab, and it was it was like a little bit of a weird setup. We're already smoking a little bit. I'm I'm pretty high, and he pulls out this water piece. And when I was over at this guy's house, we always smoked joints. He had every kind of paper. He always had that pile of weed. We always smoked joints. There was maybe one time I was over and I was like, you got a bong or something? And he like pulled it out just for me, but then like never really did it again. The dude just loves smoking joints. So he pulled out a water piece for the dabs that we were about to do. So I knew it was going to be special. You know, it was like, I never have seen this dude's glass. And he pulls out a special rig just for this occasion. And I remember looking at the setup, you know, and if you've ever done a dab off like the older nails, it was literally like a glass nail that would sit on a male joint and then like a dome or like a globe would go over top of it. And there was no carb cap or anything. You would just heat up the nail put your, your globe on and then touch your dab to the nail. It was like an interesting setup. I remember looking at the glass and going, this doesn't look like a bowl or my bong at home or whatever. Just kind of analyzing, how, what, what are we doing here? So like after he pulls out the rig, then he pulls out this little like sleeve or whatever and it's got some branding on it. It's California something. I can't remember the brand or whatever it was. This was many years ago. But the thing that I remember next is him actually pulling the syringe out of the sleeve because it's freaked me out, right? If if you've ever seen concentrate in a syringe, it's a, it's a little bit weird. I'm super used to it now. I think I got some, I got, I got one right here on the desk. It's not a big deal. But the only time I'd ever seen weed was like in a Ziploc bag and it was just, you know, little green nugs in a Ziploc bag. That was the only time I'd ever seen weed or like somebody's homemade brownies and I knew there was weed in it. So this dude pulls out a syringe with oil in it and like my heart just dropped for a second because I, I you know, I didn't know anything about the quality of oil. It was pretty dark from my, from my memory. I didn't know that lighter was gonna be better, dark was gonna be worse. I didn't know anything like that. I just remember seeing a syringe and I'm just, I'm, I'm freaking out for a second, right? I'm at this dude's house, I'm already a little baked. I'm like, I don't want to inject this. I've never injected anything. This is like real drugs, dude. I don't want to, I don't want to put a needle in my arm or what do I got? I'm just sitting there like trying to figure out how I'm going to tell my boy I'm not going to shoot up weed with him or whatever. Like, I didn't know. I had no idea. I'm just there like slightly panicked, looking around, trying to figure out how to make my escape, trying to figure out, can I make my phone ring and have an emergency? What do I got to do so I don't have to inject weed with this guy? So I'm sitting there freaking out for like a few moments. I don't know if my friend could hear my thoughts or whatever, but he just looks over at me and he's like, oh, uh, don't worry, we're not going to inject this. And I'm just like, whew. I felt like a wave of relief because I'm like, Jesus, I really thought I was about to shoot up some weed. I mean, I wasn't going to, but like. Anyway, so I have this wave of relief or whatever, and I'm just like, okay, cool. I'm glad I don't have to shoot this. I didn't want to stick a needle in my arm. I didn't know. Now I'm analyzing the syringe. I noticed the needle's not even sharp. It's just like, it's just like a wide wide enough one that you could just get it through and drop stuff out. And the, the needles that they come with are for like filling up a vape pen or making sure you can get it on your coil. It's not a sharp one to stab through anything. I, I didn't know how we were going to do it. It's just like this this liquidy stuff sitting in a syringe. Like, what do I even do with this? Do I eat it? Do I, I, don't, I don't know. But and we had the rig out or whatever. So obviously we're going to smoke it some way. So my friend is like kind of looking around. He's like, where is it? Where is it? I'm like, what is he? What is he doing? And then he sees his torch. And he goes over, it was like on the kitchen counter. He walks over, grabs his torch. And this was this wasn't like this, right? This isn't like the butane, the butane torches. If you've done dab several years ago, everybody had like a propane torch. They had like that Coleman tank with the Burnsomatic torch topper. You get it like Home Deep or whatever. That was almost everybody's dab torch several years ago. So he goes and gets out his <laughs> his propane torch. I'll tell you what. And uh I'm just like, what? Fuck. Like I knew what a, a blowtorch was, but like I I don't weld. I don't I don't need that. What do we what do we need a blowtorch for? And then he like starts describing the process to me. He's like, alright, I heat up this glass thing and then I put the dome over and then I'm I'm gonna squirt the, the dab on it and breathe it in. And he's like, I'll go first so you can see how to do it or whatever. So now I'm like, wait. 
we need a torch for this. I'm freaking out again. I was like, all right. It went from, it went from, I was going to inject this to now, okay, I don't have to inject this. So I had the wave of relief, but now I'm like, wait, we need a fucking blow torch for this. Why do we need a blow torch? This is crazy. I didn't, I didn't know at the time, but after he explained to me, he's like, all right, heat this up. It's going to get red hot. This is years ago. So everybody's doing glowies. He was like, I'm going to heat this up till it gets red hot, put the thing on and then squirt it on. I'm like, oh my God, we're freebasing it, dude. I'm do we're doing drugs. I'm freebasing the weed now. And he does his hit and it's like a nice big hit. I remember smelling it and it smelled good. Like the dabs had like a really good smell. He, he did the dab super hot, super hot. Everybody did back then. It was glass nails. They didn't hold a lot of heat. Nobody really knew. But I remember it was like smelled good. I was kind of excited after smelling it. Cause like, oh, that's gonna get me high. I was still nervous cause I'd never done the dab before. I'd never seen a concentrate and a syringe. I'd never really seen a concentrate before. And uh, I'd never seen anyone use a torch for smoking weed. So there were so many like boxes being checked, so many new things occurring for me that I was just like, oh my God, I hope I survive this. Like, I didn't know. And anyway, it's, it's my turn, my turn to dab. He sets it up for me. I think we wait a few minutes because the, the dome that you would slide around the nail area would get warm. It would pick up a little bit of the heat because uh, you would torch the nail so hot and put it over. And this was an issue you'd have back in the day where your globe would get wax build up on it and then it would just get stuck. So you couldn't pull it off to torch your nail. I remember we kind of had to like twist it and wiggle it. He would like torch it for like a split second to try to loosen it up. And we did that to pull the globe off so we could dab again. So I'm getting prepared. I'm, I'm like, okay. Uh, I'm sitting there getting ready for it. I don't, I don't really know what to do. Uh, I'm like looking at my buddy for a little bit of help. He's like, don't worry, I'll do it. I'll torch it, globe it, and I'll put the concentrate on for you. So I'm just like holding the rig, like just waiting. I'm, I'm still nervous because the whole thing's... The whole thing's new. I've never done this before. But he torches it for me. He puts the globe on and then he starts with the syringe he's like you ready start pulling so i just start pulling on this piece he starts squirting it out and this is something i've mentioned before everybody's dab everybody's first dab that they do especially mine is too big and too hot and i i know this from experience my my first dab red hot and it was i don't i don't know it was a lot it was more than you would need Anytime I've given someone their first dab, it's usually off of an e-nail and it's the smallest amount. And they're like, wow, that was really good. But like a lot of people, most people, their first dab is just like, it's a violent experience. It's too hot. It's too much. And they just weren't ready. And that's, that's precisely what happened to me. My friend's just squirting more on this nail. He, he was like trying to, trying to get me really high. You know, that's what you, you do when you're giving somebody their first step. Cause you know, they're not going to be able to reach that height from smoking. You got to really do it with the dab. So he just starts squirting it, squirting on the nail. I'm pulling and pulling. And this is a hot dab. If you've ever taken like a glowy or a really hot dab, you can feel the warmth of the vapor like it entered my mouth and throat i could feel the warmth it's like hitting my throat with a sharpness on its way down where i'm just like <sighs> it was bad it was it was harsh but i knew i had to like power through so i'm just pulling and pulling and most dabs they were vaporizing instantly back in the day now i throw something on my puff coat it takes me 40 to 60 seconds to vaporize it all you do a glow, you hit the whole hit in like six to eight seconds and it's gone. So he's just squirting more and more. It's vaporizing instantly. I'm just pulling and pulling basically as much as I could take. And at, at a certain point, it just, I stopped. I just started coughing instantly. It, I hit the threshold. I hit the max of the hot vapor that I could hit. And I had to, I pushed the rig away while he was still dripping it on. I remember because it was like kind of a little fumble with the whole setup. And I was like, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I didn't want to like push the hot nail into him because I knew the whole area was hot, but I was just like trying to get it away from me. I was trying to cough. It was, it was bad. And it was, it was the violent, the most violent coughing I'd ever done. I can remember. I couldn't breathe. I was coughing so much. I'm trying to inhale, but everything in me is <laughs> just like bursting all of the air in my lungs out of my body trying to <laughs> trying to fight the demon inside of me that was the hottest dab i've ever taken in my life and i'm just 
I'm just like out of it, bro. Just like coughing to the point where I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it, right? When you cough so much, you can't even breathe. It starts to get scary. But eventually it settles, right? You kind of catch your breath, the, the burning sensation, the irritation in your throat. It, it, it fades. It goes away. You take a few sips of water. You start to fight it. But I say it was like 10 minutes later, like 10 minutes of just straight coughing and not being able to do anything else. And this is one of the reasons that I... I try not to cough so much when I smoke because some of the first few dabs I ever took was such a bad experience with coughing. We like my my throat is sore for a few days and it's it's just from coughing. The dab didn't do it. It was the minutes and minutes of coughing after that really, really messed my throat up. So it was maybe one of those things that kind of steered me in the direction of trying to avoid coughing as much when I smoke. But I just I sat there super slumped just one of the highest i've ever been in my life you know one of the highest times i'm sitting on his couch i can't even remember we're watching i think we were watching movies i I think we watched like the entirety of a movie and i was still just as high and i was fuck bro how do i when do i come down it was such like a dazing experience i like was forgetting things that had happened that day that week it was it was really like it was wild because i had brought over this dude's computer back that day after he wanted me to look at it or whatever try to fix it and i remember it was like sitting out like he didn't put it away or whatever it's just wherever i put it and i remember sitting on the couch and i looked over at his computer and in my head i remember him asking hey do you think you could take a look at my computer and I'm just look over and be like, oh, uh, yeah, I'll take a look at your computer today if you want. <laughs> he said, uh, I think, uh, I think you already took care of that, bro. And I'm just like, I was blown away for a second. Like, did, did that today? Like just now? I thought he meant that I was doing that while I was just sitting there high. I thought... I thought what he said meant that I had already looked at it while I was sitting there. I forgot that I had looked at it like the day before and brought it over, you know. I just remember seeing it, remember that he asked me to to look at it. What? Look, how high am I? I was looking at his computer, I don't remember. And we started laughing about it. I was I was just like generally confused. I kind of remembered later that, oh yeah, it was over at my house. I looked at it. But at the time, I was just like, what is he talking about? And I, I seriously, like, was so high after one dab. I only did one dab this day. Now when I dab, I, I do several. Why not? You just, you stop when you're done. You stop when you don't feel like it. But it was really like a one and done kind of experience back in the day. I was high for hours. I think more than three hours. We watched a whole movie at his house. And I'm just sitting there like, I think I'm still as high is right after the dab and it was just i didn't plan for this right i just would usually go over smoke a little bit and then leave now i'm like stuck at this dude's house i've been there for like a couple hours just like not able to leave we had some munchies we had a few you know sometimes like sugary drinks and sugary snacks can help you kind of curb that highness kind of bring you down a little bit or get you a little bit more normal ready for we're eating all kinds of munchies and stuff that he has i'm just sitting there just like trying to trying to figure out how to not be high and it was like i don't know almost four hours later before i'm finally like coming to basically like where i feel like i'm in control almost 100 percent. well before i was just i was just so high i couldn't even think about standing up and walking around where you just he just slumped and locked in. Like that's, they talk about Indica being in the couch. Your first dab being like a red hot, super big dab is gonna lock you in the couch. Even if it's 110% sativa, I don't even care, bro. I'm locked in. So he didn't have any like concentrate to sell. I remember like, hey, uh, you got any of that I can could buy off of you or whatever? And he, nah, I, this is the only bit that I got. It was just a one syringe or whatever for a while. So I I didn't even do my second dab for like a few weeks after that. And it was from somebody else who made their own at the time. Because BHO was, was pretty big. A lot of people were able to just buy the tubes for blasting. And, but yeah, I didn't even do my next dab until like a few weeks later. And it was kind of a similar experience. I might do a whole story on 
on that because I feel like I got just as high. It was like a really, it was like a really similar experience where I just coughed for 10 minutes and was high for hours. And now I'm like, I can't achieve that level of high anymore. But shortly after that, after my first stab, it started to become a little bit more popular. There were people that were making their own in this area. There were some people that were getting their stuff from Cali, but you know, they really were because there was not too many places to actually get it from back then. Most of the concentrates early on, I think that I dabbed in Florida were made in Florida by people that just learned how to do open blasting and whatnot. And it was pretty common back then to pay like a hundred dollars a gram. If you paid less than a hundred a gram for concentrate in Florida, at least in my area at the time, then you were getting some terrible stuff. So I think the first gram of concentrate I ever bought was like a hundred bucks. But it was kind of a rare thing for a while. Not everybody had it, not everybody had good stuff. And sometimes you would you would get some just poop soup, some absolute butane filled trash you dab it once and it was so harsh like, i don't think i could smoke the rest of that so shortly after that i think maybe a year or two later i eventually moved to colorado after they legalized recreationally and then i started buying legal dabs and then i had options you know that's when it became more of a thing and for a while i love dab so much when i was in colorado i stopped smoking flour i had a nice bong collection i remember i I just didn't use any of them for over a year. It was just all about dabs. I was buying every different kind of consistency, every strain I could get, every different extraction company I can get in Colorado. Boy, do I love dabs. But it's interesting to go back and think about the first dab I ever took. It's interesting to recall that I, I was really nervous. I almost like didn't do it. I was trying to talk myself out of the situation because I thought we were going to inject that shit. I didn't know. <laughs> fucking no oh man but anyway that's basically the story i don't really know how to wrap it up uh, if you made it this far in the story comment let me know was your first dab similar did you have a a wild experience do you remember your first dab i don't know or what are you dabbing on right now just leave me a comment that kind of shit helps my videos out while you're down there hit that like button that subscribe button maybe the bell the one that lets people know that uh hey this guy just dropped a video Anyway, appreciate you guys watching this. Appreciate you chilling and hanging out with me. Don't forget to check out my other social media. We'll have uh, we'll have links in the description. Follow me on Insta. Follow me on Twitch. We've been doing weekly giveaways on Monday. So make sure you tune into the Twitch streams. And I appreciate you guys chilling. Appreciate you hanging out. And maybe we'll get another story time coming soon. Have a super lit day.